Google. We don't, know, we don't know much about your background. What was your childhood like? I had a very, very sad childhood. You do? Very sadly, my father died two years before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> and being a cesarean baby, effectively, I'm still not right. <laughs> It's all right for you, there was a normal birth, that being a cesarean baby, in fact, you know, I'm still all right. <laughs> when I stop the car, I get out of the sunroof. <laughs> then, then, of course, mother wanted an abortion, but the doctor said, since I started school, maybe too late. <laughs> but, it was hard. <laughs> I hear, uh, on a sadder note, that your grandfather had a, well, a sad ending. Well, he didn't really. We, unfortunately, when he died, he died in a blue suit, and he never ever wore a blue suit. But the Undertaker, what a lovely man! What a beautiful Christian man he was. I, he was just so wonderful. Because we couldn't afford to bury him in a black suit. We couldn't afford it then. We got there the day before the funeral, and, and bless his heart, he's a lovely man. He had grandfather in the black suit. He said, I've sorted it out for your poor little family. He said, the day after you brought your grandfather in, another man was brought in. Now, he died in a black suit, and he wanted the blue suit. <laughs> so he said, I just swapped the heads. <laughs> Isn't, that lovely? Isn't that a lovely thing to do, then, then? Isn't that lovely? Where, where do you get your comedy from? Is it observation? I mean... Probably, Mel, because when I started first, Cornwall was not a hatchery for comics. I just had to work out what was funny. I, I used to go go to a show and I think, that story was funnier than that, but they didn't laugh enough, so I got it wrong. And I'd lie in bed for hours and hours just trying to work out. I could swing that around, change a word to, to make it funnier, and I'd go out and try it. Sometimes it was worse, sometimes it was better. And then I could find it. I knew the story was funny, but I wasn't telling it right. But after 20 years of doing this and sleeping at night, <coughs> and working on every little bit of this show, they said I was a natural. <laughs> so it took me 20 years to become a natural. But things that, that I find funny wouldn't necessarily make the crowd laugh. I mean, there was a lovely story when a boy in Bude in Cornwall went to the uh, building site as a job. He was only 17. And the boss said, can you make tea? He said, yes, I can. He said, can you drive a forklift? He said, how big's the kettle? <laughs> Well, and I think we've got a clip of it. You have a clip? Yeah. we got a clip down in Cornwall. Yeah. And then my boy, he came home from work, and he said, Daddy, he said, what's the difference between theory and reality? Well, how the hell do I know? <laughs> I said, well, I'll give you an example. He said, well, I've been told by the teacher I've got to learn the difference between theory and reality. I said, well, go in after your mother. If she sleep with a plant for a million quid, he come back and said, Mother said, yes, she would sleep with a plumber for a million quid. I said, well, there you go. Now, go and ask your sister if she sleep with the plumber for a million quid. And he come back, she said she would as well. I said, there you go. That's the difference between theory and reality. <laughs> In theory, we're sitting on two million quid. <laughs> In reality, we're living with a pair of slappers. <laughs> How did you find anything clean enough on that <laughs> tape to put on this time of day? We well, did have to search through <laughs> it. Well, let's get the bleep machine to work. How's Denzel? How's oh, he's Denzel? all right. He's in good form. He, um, he, he's in good, good form. We've had, you've had a trouble with his wife, of course. Yeah, but he's, he's in good form. Is Denzel your mate? Oh, yeah. Denzel. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he's he's oh. fine. He, he, when he was marooned on a desert island years ago, he just said, a lifeboat wash ashore. And he was able to smash it up, make it into a raft. Let me tell you a funny story. I was at Salisbury, and Salisbury City Hall owes about a thousand, and it was full, and there were lovely, lovely people. They, were, they enjoyed the show, and I enjoyed making them laugh, because you do, if they enjoy it, we enjoy it. And I don't normally go and see the people after, because they frighten me, <laughs> but we had such a good night, and it was such a lovely crowd of people. I was in the dressing room, and there was a coach loading up outside, full of people that had been to see the show. I said, well, I'll be really gracious, and I'll go out and see them, you know. So I got up on this coach, and I said, well, I hope you all enjoyed the show, and thanks for coming. And they said, get off the bus with that filthy pipe. This is a no-smoking bus. Now, get off. We don't have slobs like you on the bus. 
They haven't been to my show. They've seen Oklahoma next door. <laughs> They didn't have a clue, I was. Jeff, how would you like to be remembered? I think, I, not as a personality or a celebrity, just somebody that came and made you laugh. But I've been on a diet all my life. I've been hungry since I was 20. If I pass a, <laughs> if I pass a shop with a frying pan in, I'll put on two stones. But on my headstone, I want slim at last. Isn't that lovely? Well, we'll remember you for the laughter. <laughs> yes, thank you for coming in. Yes, Super safe to see trip you. back to Cornwall. Yes. Jethro! Thank you, Jethro. Thank you very much. He's gone. Off he goes. He's gone. He's gone. He's back to Cornwall.